Hello everyone, my name is Paul Mazzoni and I'm a guest reviewer for the other Paul, Paul Grogan, here today to talk to you about this game, Ethnos, put out in 2017 by Simon or Coolman or not. This is a, essentially a set collection game with a little bit of area control thrown in. Uh, what I really love about the game is not the name, because uh, frankly I wasn't sure what that was uh, even telling me. Uh, the art, while exquisite, uh, gotta say, I'm a sci-fi guy, so fantasy kind of turned me off. Um, sorry, but the thing that I really liked was the designer, Paul Amore. He's done Libertalia, he's done the great gateway game, Rise of Augustus, and one of my personal favorite games, Dogs of War, which was also done by Simon. Now, the great thing about this game is the replayability is just off the charts. Um, there are 12 different tribes that are used in this game, and each of which has a different power. It is also going to determine the components that are used, going to be used in the game. Um, you will be given these cards, much like in Dominion, to determine which six you're going to use. You will draw, draw them, and then, boom, take those cards. The other six aren't used. So, do the math. That's 6 out of 12, 924 combinations. So there is a lot of game to be played here. I've played the game nine times. Obviously, I haven't used all the combinations, but those that I've used, I've never said, oh, you know what, let's not use the skeleton with the giant because that combination just is not going to work. Um, now, there are people that will say, well, hey, can we use the centaur? Sure, you know, you have that ability to choose what you want, but quite frankly, I'm okay with just doing drawing out of this and then letting that determine what's used in the game. The other great thing about the game is, hey, this game can play up to six players. And while on Board Game Geek, people are saying, don't play six, frankly, 26% of the people are saying that. I've done it, and hey, it works just fine. So I've got no problem with it. Now, four or five probably is the sweet spot. If you play with fewer than four, um, you are only going to use five of the tribes instead of six. Uh, and the game is only played two rounds instead of three. So it's a different game. And if you go down to two, there is a rule change that, quite frankly, I think changes the strategy in a way that I don't quite like, but hey, if someone wants to try it and I'm the only person around, I'll do it with two, no problem. Um, now this game has drawn a lot of comparisons to Ticket to Ride, and that's fair, uh, because you are only gonna do one action per turn, which makes it very easy to uh, teach other people and you will have a community pile that you can draw that one card. The other action that you can do is play a band of cards. So a band of cards can consist of all cards of one tribe, in which case they're gonna be different colors representing different kingdoms, or they can be all of one color, say red, and then different tribes. The card that is on top is going to determine what is the action that you are going to take. Now, inevitably, someone will always ask once the community pile is gone, hey, when are we gonna replenish this? Well, that's the great thing we're not gonna replenish it. The way that it's going to get replenished is if you go to play a band of allies and you can't add cards from your hand into that band and your hand can only go up to 10, you're gonna to have to throw all those cards in the community pile. Eventually, sometimes it does get into a bit of a drawing and whoever gets luckiest and gets the best combinations of cards, but it's also kind of a game of chicken in my opinion. It gets tense as you don't want to be that guy that finally plays the band and throws the cards out and gives all these great cards for other people to play. No, you want someone else to go first so that you can see what they got and you may be disappointed and draw from the draw pile anyway, which is always an option. Um, but uh, that, I think, little twist really makes it interesting. And you always have to remind newbies that are playing, like uh, they'll sit there, they'll play their band, they got these cards, they're ready to get, and you go, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, throw those into the community pile. Uh, so as I said, um, the components of this game, depending on what cards you use, for instance, this is the Merfolk. If you, you're using the Merfolk card, you'll, you'll put this into the game. If not, then you won't have it. This is always in the game, and this is the main board. Um, as you can see, there are the six different kingdoms and there are different spots for point values. So even that adds variability to the game because that is always going to be different. The red kingdom one game could be worth a lot of points and the next game it could be worth absolutely nothing. These are the components that you use to put on the different areas for your area control. And so um, while these components are serviceable, um, you know, it, they're not the greatest, but uh, it works, and it doesn't take up a lot of room. The um, manual, as usual, is a great job by Cool Mini or not. So I highly recommend the game. I've played it 
more than any other game in my collection over the last nine months. If you're looking for something that is almost a gateway game but kind of goes to the next level, is easy to teach, uh, and has a lot of replayability, hopefully I've driven that part of, of it, then you're going to want to check out Ethnos. And, you know, get by the name. It's not the greatest, um, but Polymori, again, hit one out of the park. So uh, I give it a thumbs up. I highly recommend you try it out. And if you want to see what else I'm playing, check out PMAS Plays Games on Instagram. And thank you very much for listening and hope to see you again.